Now it's time to get ready for our first quiz in Chapter 3. Chapter 3 starts off by talking about extrema, determining if we have critical values, if we have maximums and minimums, and then gets into intervals such as increasing and decreasing. This is the first video in a series of two that is going to help you review for this quiz. So the first slide that you're looking at right now is asking you to find critical values. It's one of the first skills that you learned how to do in this chapter, and you can be given any type of function Finding the critical value, critical values again, the definition is critical values are when the derivative is zero or the derivative is undefined. Most common mistake that students make is forgetting to take the derivative, which seems silly, but sometimes you get so caught up in what you're trying to figure out if it equals zero that you forget the calculus involved. So if you look at this first one, we need to derive this. Now, if you just start right off the bat, you may be tempted to do a quotient rule. You don't want to do a quotient rule for this one because you can divide everything by x, kind of like a large pretzel type problem, and create a much simpler equation. So when I do that, I'm going to get x squared when I cancel an x from the first one, minus 5x when I cancel x from the second one and plus 6. Here's where I've seen students in the past just set it equal to 0 and find the critical values, but you haven't taken the derivative yet. My derivative, very simple derivative, is 2x minus 5. I want to know when that equals 0. So set it equal to 0, do a quick solving, add 5, 2x equals 5, so x equals 5 halves. This one only has one critical value, which means at most it can only have one extrema. Should make sense because if you look at what it looked like simplified, it was a parabola, and a parabola is only going to have one extrema. The next question is a rational one, and again, the temptation is to start to find critical values right away before you derive. You need to take the derivative first, so we could figure out when the derivative equals 0 or undefined. The way I take the derivative here is I need a quotient rule. I can't avoid a quotient rule on this one. So it's bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. We're going to simplify the top. This is why the simplifying was so important last chapter because now it's going to help us find these critical values. I get x plus 5 minus x plus 3, which is going to give me just an 8 on top, and I'm going to keep the bottom as x plus 5 squared. Here's my derivative. I want to know when it's 0. In this case, it'll never be 0. 0 comes from the numerator, and 8 is a constant, so it will never be 0. And then I want to look at the denominator. When the denominator is 0, it will be an undefined derivative. That does give me a critical value. It gives me a critical value at negative 5. So we have two problems here, identifying the critical value. In this case, we had one critical value for both. We do have the opportunity, the possibility of having multiple critical values. These just only had one. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to work with the mean value theorem. There were two theorems in chapter 3 that you need to know how to work with. Rolle's theorem, which was a little more simplistic, and then mean value theorem. The nice thing about mean value theorem, it may be a long equation, but rarely are you going to be asked to memorize that equation. Most problems, even on the AP test itself, will tell you to use the mean value theorem to find C, and then they'll put the equation there. So you don't have to memorize this long equation. You just have to remember how it worked. This side is where you put the derivative. This side is going to be a number. It's going to represent slope. You're going to set them equally to each other and solve for x. You're looking for an answer that is inside this interval. So if you get any answers that are outside that interval, we will toss them out. So first, we're going to take the derivative. Derivative is 3x squared minus 12. Derivatives, again, should be pretty easy. On the right side, here's where a calculator will help you with some for the computation. We want to figure out f of 3 minus f of 0 over 3 minus 0. So f of 3 means you put 3 into the original function. Everything on the right side is going to the original function. When you put 3 in, you're going to get 27 minus 36 plus 1. Here are things you can do on your calculator. You get negative 8. When you put 0 in, you're going to get 1. So you end up getting negative 9 over 3, giving you a slope of negative 3. So what this problem is essentially asking you is when is the slope negative 3? You have a derivative on one side, you have the numeric value on the other. Now we're going to solve it. Looking for x, our answers will always be x values for these problems. Divide by 3. Take the square root. When you take the square root, you normally put plus or minus the square root of 3. However, you need to look at your interval. Because with the mean value theorem, 
all it guarantees is that you get at least one answer inside the interval. We do not want to count any x values that are not in the interval. We also don't want to count endpoints, which seems strange because it is a closed interval, but the mean value theorem itself only wants x values that fall inside the interval, not including the endpoints. So for example, if we would have got 3 or 0, we would have tossed those out as well. Negative radical 3 is not in my interval, so the one number that is guaranteed by the mean value theorem is the square root of 3. And it doesn't have to be a whole number. You'll look here, you have a radical. It could be fraction, it could be negative. As long as it's in the interval, that's all that matters. I've got one more slide for you, and this is going to show you the last set of problems that are going to be on your quiz. And they're all going to have the same directions. I think there's four of them. And they're going to ask you to go through a particular function and find critical values, find where the function is increasing and decreasing, and then from that, determine where the minimums and maximums are. So when you do these problems, the most important thing is make sure you label as you go what you're doing. I know it's tempting to just start deriving and not write down things. But these problems are going to get more complicated later in the chapter, so it's good to have good habits now. Take your derivative. Be careful, because your first derivative sets up everything. So if you accidentally derive incorrectly, it will throw off your entire problem. Factor, so take out a 6. And then factor even further. You get x minus 2, x plus 1. Your critical values, then, in this case, are where the derivative is 0. You won't have any undefined values here. You get x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. Get in the habit of labeling them with the CV so you know what you found. Now we want to set up our intervals. So our first interval will go from negative infinity to negative 1 to the first critical value. From negative 1 to 2, and then from 2 to infinity, you'll always have one more interval than you do critical values. We need to test each interval, and when you test it, you're testing it in the first derivative. So again, label that. Write down what you're doing. Don't make the greater, in this case me, assume I know where you're putting things. Take any number in the first interval, so pick something like negative 2. I usually plug it into this line, because all I care about is if I get a positive or negative. So I have a positive 6 times a negative times another negative, giving me positive. Make sure you tell me positive means increasing, because next section we're going to start talking about positive meaning something different, so you cannot just write a plus sign. For the inter interview, inter interval, pick a 0. When I put 0 in, I get positive, negative, positive, so that gives me negative, which means it's a decreasing interval. And then I pick anything bigger than 2, like 3, and everything is positive, so I'm back to increasing. So your increasing intervals are from negative infinity to negative 1, and from 2 to infinity, and then the middle interval, negative 1 to 2, is decreasing. Finally, determine your extrema. Using the first derivative test, I know if I go from increasing to decreasing, then at that point, I have a maximum. So I'm going to have a maximum at negative 1. If I go from decreasing to increasing, at that point, I'm going to have a minimum. So I have a minimum at 2. You have to give me the full coordinate. You can't just say the x value. It has to be a point x and y, because eventually, we do want to graph these things. The way you find the y is you go back to the original function. So you'll go to your original function and plug negative 1 in. And again, this is something that is easier to do when you have a calculator. Go to your original function and plug 2 in. When you plug negative 1 in, you get 7. That is your maximum point. When you plug 2 in, you get negative 20. That is your minimum. You'll be doing this four times on the quiz, going through this full process. Label things. Make sure you're labeling increasing and decreasing. Make sure you tell me which point's minimum, which is max. You can't have more than one of each. You can have no minimums or no maximums. And make sure you label where you took the derivative. These should be uh, beginning stages to get you ready for the quiz.